Hello, hello everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, my name is Carmen and I have our product manager Jack with me here today and we're talking about, well really you are asking questions and we're answering them. So uh, that is what's going on today. So I'm going to give everyone a few moments to join us. I always like to just go on YouTube and make sure it's working okay. So let me just check. I'm going to mute myself so I won't get any feedback. All right, so it looks like we are live on YouTube. So, you know, I like to get this thing started with a few icebreakers. Um, I switched it up today, so I hope you guys like it. But our first one is always going to be, where are you joining from? Go ahead and put it in the chat. We want to know where are you joining us from today? All right, so we got someone from Johannesburg, South Africa. Amazing. I love we have a worldwide audience. All right. Anyone else in my Wi-Fi may be going bad. All right. We have Diane, which is a regular from Clarksville. Thank you for joining us, Diane. Good to see you again. All right. So we have Carl from Sweden. Amazing. I'm not going to blunder your name at all, but we have someone from Montreal. Uh, Daniel from Fort Worth, Texas. So we're coming back to the USA side, looks like. Awesome, awesome. So I'm going to put my next question up and feel free to continue to um, add where you're joining us from today. So I'll just do a few more of these. Uh, we have Christopher from Lagos, Nigeria. Okay, Africa is in the, in the virtual building. All right, and so it looks like Jack, you got someone over here in the UK close to you. Yeah, <laughs> uh, not, not that close. South time, so it's probably a decent five, six hours from me. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, nice. Close enough. <laughs> <laughs> right. Awesome. All right. So this is one of the, I guess, a kind of fun one. I don't know how this is going to work, but share an emoji that best describes what your course will be about. So whatever your course is about, try to find an emoji that describes what it's about and we will try to guess it. <laughs> We're going to see how this works. So this is going to be interesting. My one would probably be the thinking emoji because it's still in my head and not actually written down. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. And also, if you don't have your course already created, feel free, whatever you're thinking your course is going to be, go ahead and put that emoji in there, uh, whatever you're thinking it is. So Ooh, we got to care it. I'm thinking something health related. Uh, <laughs> And when we try to guess it, if you want to put what it is in the chat as well, that's great. But I feel like it's something um, health, uh, maybe food or something like that. Okay. Oh, security. I'm thinking the same thing, security. Do you mm. think it's like actual physical or like cyber? Cyber. I, I feel so too, cyber security. All right, I'm sorry, I clicked the back button by mistake. Okay, so it's container gardening. That sounds very different. Um, you wanna like say exactly what that is? That'll be amazing. All right, Tracy has the praying hands emoji, uh, which is funny because I watched this show that said that the praying hands emoji could also be someone high-fiving or two people high-fiving. So, <laughs> Um, I'm guessing this is something more uh, maybe religious related, um, maybe teaching people how to pray, which is a good one. <laughs> I hate when I'm at dinner and someone asks me to say grace and I'm just like always stumbling, like, what do I say? So that could be a course for somebody. All right. So Diane has like the, um, I don't know what you call that, like the painters um, for the colors. I'm, I'm going to just say it's a painting. Oh. So yeah, uh, it looks like your emoji didn't come through. I know it looks maybe different depending on what device you're on. So sorry that one didn't come through. If you want to just share what it is, that's fine. Valerie has books. Um, I feel like that could be anything. What do you think, Jack? Books. Books. Um, 
yeah, I'm stumped on books. Maybe teaching kids to read, I don't know, but then they need to read to learn the course, right? Unless it's video-based, I don't know. Mm -hmm. It makes me think about some of we did for our spotlight. So if you're on our Pencils Down newsletter list, um, someone, they actually, I think they're, I forgot where they're based at, but they have like a storybook thing where children, they act out how they feel. And I'm probably like wondering what it is. So they make me think of that. It's a painter's palette. Okay. So Tracy, I think she had the praying hands. It's a mindfulness and social justice and their connections. Amazing. All right. So we'll probably do like one more. Uh, with the name <laughs> and that emoji. <laughs> I think I kind of understand like what that is. <laughs> that one's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's obvious to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I think I know what that is. <laughs> you don't have to share it in the chat. I don't want to be inappropriate, but yeah, that's that's <laughs> <pretty funny. laughs> Oh man. Um, I think what does Beyonce call it? Demon time. That's what it reminds me of, demon time. <laughs> All right. So, all right. So what goal will launching your course help you achieve? So if you're launching a course, like what's the big, like, why, like, what do you want to get out of like your course? And it could be something as simple as, Hey, I want to make some more money. Um, you know, I always had this passion. So we would just love to know, like, why are you launching your course? So what goal is behind? Like, what are you trying to achieve by putting your course out there? So feel free to add that. And that's going to be our last icebreaker before we start answering some of your questions. And even if you don't want to answer this icebreaker, go ahead and start putting your questions um, for the chat. This is a Q&A session. So all your questions about Learn Dash, we will try to answer them. Um, and of course, if we can't, we will definitely have our support team try to follow up with you or just have you reach out to support directly. All right. Anyway, so Kyle's right above. So Kyle said that I probably knew it after the discussions and I did. So that was actually technically I was cheating on Kyle's because I knew full well what his course was. Oh, wow. <laughs> you, cheater. you didn't even say like, oh, I know Carl. So yeah, you already knew. But listen, that was pretty good. Like the shield, like that made, I was like cybersecurity. That makes mm -hmm. sense. All right. So we have a few people that answered to the, the other question we just put up, which was like, what's your big goal behind putting your course out? Um, so I think I had Diane's up from teaching people how to compose paintings. That was from the previous one. Um, Tracy says passive income along with putting my work into the world. We love that one. We love passive income. Um, teach people how to get work in clinical trials. Okay. We'll make Scandinavia more secure also. <laughs> All right. So share knowledge and make some money. Listen, that is always two great ones. Like you're bending, you're doing something for other people and you're also benefiting from it as well. So both ways, mutual benefits. Okay. So create a platform for the future of work. I love that. All right. So sharing knowledge and experience in this lifestyle so others can explore and learn themselves in a safe way. I love that because um, I've definitely heard of some accidents happening. And so <laughs> Like I said, I'm not going to say what I think that it is that you do, but I think I have an understanding. So that's a great concept. I love that as well. All right. So that is the end of our icebreakers. Thank you guys so much for, for participating in that. And so now we're going to get into the nitty gritty and start answering your questions. So we already had some questions that came in from when you registered on our website. So we're going to start with those. And that gives everyone time to like put their questions in there. Um, I do want to say that we will not be able to get all the questions that we got in the registration. But the good news is because you entered your email address and your name, our support team is actually going to reach out to you directly and answer your question. So um, if you are watching a replay, if you can't make it, it's still good. We're still going to have our support team to reach out to you if we can't get to the question that you put in the registration form here today. All right. So let's see. Let me go ahead and. Copy and paste the first question. And this one is kind of like a few different um, questions all in one. So I'll try to go slowly. So is there a plugin that will send a customer an email with login access to enroll courses automatically? I have to manually add people to courses and I want it fully automated. So it definitely sounds like something we can do, but I will give that to Jack. I would say it sounds like something's broken. I mean, by default, if they register on the website, they're enrolled automatically and get an email that they've got 
enrolled in the course and they have access and you don't need to do it manually. So it sounds like there's an issue on that site or a way it's set up. Um, maybe they're using the third party system, but yeah, that's that's how it works out the box. So it sounds like something's really broken there and that needs support. Yeah, definitely reach it out to our support team. So support um, dot learn dash dot com um, to get help. And I should probably put that up as well. So there we have it. I'm going to actually put that in the chat so that way it can just be in there floating around and you, everyone can see it. And what's a support um, direct email address that they can send it to? Jack, if you know offhand. They most probably want to do it through the form because if they do it through the form, if they do it through the support email directly, then support's going to ask them to supply their license number and stuff. The form will automatically validates them already. Okay. So yep. it's a proper process. So that makes sense. So just to make it easier on yourself, just I would say go to the website and do the support. Mm -hmm. So that way all your stuff shows up automatically. Um, that makes a lot of sense. All right. So I'm just going to get through, I think it's maybe four or five more questions here from the registration form. And then I'll go to the ones as we're getting in the chat. Um, so the next one we have is, what is the best way to export quiz answers? It's a good question. What's the best way to export quiz answers? Uh, so there's a couple of different plugins. Uh, I think one, I'm just trying to Google it now, if it's Woo Ninjas or Wisdom Labs. I know one of them has a plugin for this. Mm -hmm. mm, I think it's Woo Ninjas. I want to say it's Woo Ninjas, but if I do, I'm going to look like a fool if it's not. So let's check. Um, so is it Woo Ninjas? I'm looking, I'm looking. Yeah, so Woo Ninjas have quiz, advanced quiz reports that you can export to Excel uh, and you can go through the spreadsheet and it's, you know, a nice simple way to get the answers in an exported format. So that's one of the, one of the best ways to do it. Mm -hmm. um you can export some stuff using pro panel uh from landash ourselves it's maybe not quite as detailed as the woo ninjas one right now so it really depends on the level of detail that you want uh you could go the woo ninjas route the pro panel route um or you could just try you know writing some custom sql if you're you know developer orientated and be like woo yeah i got my results um so yeah there's a few different ways you can do it yeah that sounds scary <laughs> <laughs> that sounds very scary sql i just found it was pronounced sql i was like sql <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah i always go to say sql and i'm like stop myself and i'm like no sql because then someone looks at you like, what are you talking about? Like, right, hey. yeah. <laughs> but it's um, it's funny because um, actually someone in Nexus, um, they, we were talking about that and they were just saying like, a lot of us, we learn things by reading them and we never hear people talk about it. So she mm -hmm. says, when you hear someone pronounce it incorrectly, she just knows like, hey, they probably read about this, they just never heard. And I'm like, that's a great way to think about things. So it's one right. there. Nice way yeah. to think about it. All right, so our next question is, how can I check to see if we have the latest version of Learn Dash? So the easiest way, because the version number is always kept up to date on our change log, and the version number is always up to date in the support website. So you always see that on the download, and you can see, like, right now it's version 4.1.2. Uh, and then once you know what the latest version is, you can go into your WordPress admin into the plugins list and just see if you've got the latest version. Uh, you should see an update notice if you haven't got the latest version, but in case there's a licensing problem or something else going on, you may not know that you haven't got the latest. So that's just a quick way to check and verify like, oh, 4.1.2 is available, but I'm actually using 4.1.0. Right. So um, I just want to kind of break that down. So maybe go into the change lock on our website to see what is the current version and then just go into your plugin list to see um, what number that says and if it matches on the change log. Yep. I will add that link to our change log in the chat. It's like learnash.com forward slash change log. Yeah, exactly that. Yep. yep. And you can subscribe to the change log as well if you want to be notified of new uh, new releases. So if anyone wants to do that, you can get updates. Yes. And also, if you're a customer, of course, um, Pretty much every time we do a new release, we always send out an update to our email list. Um, we normally do it in our Pencils Down monthly newsletter. 
just to let you know all the new features about the new uh, the new one that's out. So that's another place that you can look as well, or just expect the email to come to you. All right, and I do see everyone's questions in the chat. I'm just going through the, the ones we got through registration, and then I will um, go to your questions as well. So try to stick around if you can. If you can't, there will be the, the replay will be up for this. All right, so our next question is, we want to do live lectures with students in person and on Zoom. Are we able to upload Zoom recordings to LearnDash? Any specific challenges? Will Zoom accomplish this pur purpose? It's a bit of a confusing question because it's really two <laughs> things. They, they want live lectures, but they want to upload a recording. That mm -hmm. doesn't quite make sense. Um, we have no direct integration with Zoom right now. There are different plugins you can use to add integrations. It doesn't track attendees, though. It doesn't track progress of, you know, it's not like a cool step where you can say if so-and-so attended, then it's marked as completed. Um, but there's nothing stopping you just embedding you know a link in the thing to the zoom course uh you could also do it with the events calendar uh you could connect that up and then they've got a really nice uh, virtual events plugin and with that you could have the zoom session kind of linked out there so you could just have it linked in the course somewhere that hey there's a zoom session starting over here uh, which would be a nice way to do it and obviously also you get the calendar functionality where you can keep track that there's a zoom session happening and you're not lost in the middle of nowhere uh, yeah. so that would be my recommendation. Yeah, I like that. And it sounds like they would use kind of like TEC or the events calendar. I'm so used to using an abbreviation mm -hmm. uh, with LearnDash. And I'm also just wondering um, what they maybe do, like maybe the drip, um, or maybe that's a drip, or like kind of date-based. So that way, um, if like the lecture is happening on June 2nd, they will put June 2nd in there and on like the date. And then it, like that lesson becomes available with that link to Zoom. Right, exactly. Yeah, they can do that as well. Totally. Okay. Yeah. So, got it. Got it. Uh, let me go to the next one. All right. So, where on Learn Dash is the best place or best to place your class syllabus, handouts, and other materials for the class? Will students be able to download and print these documents? Yeah, that's a good question. So, one of the best places to put it in my opinion would be in the course materials section uh because in the course materials like genuinely the purpose is you'd link out to materials that are used for that course you know pdfs and other type of documents for the course that students can access and download um printing doesn't technically come into that because that's more than down to the browser where they can you know print from the browser so they can do that because they're accessing the document externally uh, and it's one of the easiest ways to do it. Um, you can also, there are plugins out there where you can add additional tabs to the LearnDash. So like for LearnDash, we have course materials and lesson materials. You could add specific materials to a lesson or specific materials to the overall course. And then there's a couple of plugins out there. I think one's from, I don't remember the name now. Why someone released a plugin the other day for this, and we'll find the link and send it to you all. Uh, but there's a plugin that basically lets you add tabs where you see like lesson content and lesson materials. You could add like another tab if there's a specific word, or you know, you want to split PDFs and Word documents into two tabs so it's not all just in the same tab. Um, but that's the best way you can do it. Awesome, awesome. I think we have one more from the um registration page. So um, this one is, do you prefer any particular WordPress theme? And I'm guessing to work with LearnDash. Cadence. Cadence. <laughs> well, <laughs> cadence. That's the easiest and quickest answer ever on one of these. YouTube yeah, videos. Cadence WP. And the great thing about Cadence, they have a lot of different course uh, templates that integrate directly with, uh, with LearnDash. And so it just makes it super easy. Last week, I kind of showed my site, which I use the exact <laughs> Cadence template. And I already had like all the course pages created and things. So it made it super easy just to put my content in and like get it out there. So awesome. So now I can start getting to some of the uh, questions coming in from the chat. I start those so I can go to those easily. It looks like we have. All right. So I want to sell courses in bundles. Do I need to uh, use WooCommerce at all? Can I apply taxes based on customer location? This is a good one. Very involved. One second. Sorry, I'm applying to a message in Slack. <laughs> no problem. Still working. So I want to sell courses in bundles. Need do any WooCommerce uh, courses in bundles? Do you need WooCommerce? 
Yes and no. I would say most probably yes because WooCommerce is the easier way to do it. Um, you can use. You can most probably use, let me just check something real quick. I would say you can most probably use the uncanny guys' is stuff. Um, but I just want to verify that works as I expect it to. Lucky we have Google. <laughs> well, no, because you're saying bundles, right? You're saying a bundle of courses. So let's, let's step back. A bundle of courses, you could use Landash groups. Mm -hmm. um, it depends exactly how you want to use it because then also you get the group leader role as well, which may in your case just be the admin user. But Landash groups are actually technically memberships. So you can sell someone a group and that can consist of, you know, an, any number of courses you want. You know, it could be four courses, 10 courses, 20 courses, uh, and they can get enrolled in them courses automatically. So they can take it, and then you can charge on a reoccurring basis. You can, you know, give them coupons for discounts because we've got the new coupon stuff that supports um, discounts for groups and course standalone. And that's the cleanest way of doing it because it's native to Landash. You're not looking at installing like WooCommerce, which you know adds a lot of additional things you may not need. You're not looking at installing a third-party plugin. You can just use Landash out of the box. Um, for the taxes part, you can't apply tax in Landash right now. There's a plugin for tax from Honest WP and more advanced tax, uh, geolocation based taxing would be best using WooCommerce at the moment. Awesome. But also, geolocation taxing is a very bad way to tax people because you, I don't know where you are, but if you're in the EU, you need to tax them based on the country that they're purchasing in. And you need to remit the tax correctly to the different countries. So it's a very complex subject. Awesome, awesome. All right. So our next question is at the end of my course, I want folks to reflect in a paragraph or in a video what they have learned. How do I do this? I'm thinking the essay feature. Yeah, so you could use a final quiz with an essay feature at the end to see what the people said. Um or if you actually want it after the course, you could say redirect them to a page with a form and just have them fill that in. Um, and that could be a secondary way of doing it. I think Carl, looking at the comments, also suggested something vaguely similar to that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, adding a form to the last topic um, and you can auto complete that on submission. So yeah, that's that's a couple of ways of doing it. So you can use our essay and a quiz if you want to do the quiz based approach, or you can just use a standard form. Yeah, and that kind of makes it where if you want to require, I think that's the best way to kind of require versus maybe linking out to a form because you know just in case they don't click out to it or they just don't complete it, I think that quiz part kind of just adds an additional layer of accountability in there. So mm -hmm. that makes sense. All right, so our next question is: We want to add user registration on login. Rather than separate login on enrolling. Sorry, another Slack message. Sorry, <laughs> half a second. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, when you're trying to debug something and you're on a YouTube live, uh, where was I? <laughs> I can't even find the right tab now again. Oh, sorry, here I am. Uh, use registration on login rather than separate login on enrolling. I do registration on login on separate login. That should be I gonna assume you're using the old registration logic. So the old registration logic worked that you would click take this call, so it would go straight to the payment gateway. Your return normally non-logged in and you'd have to log in um, after enrollment. Whereas the new registration logic, you create the account first before you do that. So then they enroll and they're already logged in, which is what you want. Uh, to apply that, you need to make sure you have a registration and registration success page set in Landash LMS in your WP admin settings under registration, and that should get you exactly what you want. All right, so our next question, let's see, we have, how can I have a mobile number field on Landash registration form? So we use standard WordPress hooks for the forms, uh, which basically means if you're familiar with the WordPress API, you can hook into the form and add a new field, uh, relatively straightforward. Uh, if you're not a developer, it's obviously more complex and you may instead want to use 
a different approach. For instance, you could use gravity forms and its registration add-on to you know use registration in that manner, or a membership plugin that allows you to you know build custom checkouts, or even WooCommerce. Um, they all do provide it, but it is possible with the form, but it would require some coding. I just want to kind of get to as many as I can um, before 1.30, before we end. So we have one. Can you have a course available in multiple groups and also available as a standalone? For selling, for like actually saying you want to sell a course individually and a course in a group? Or what are we? Yeah. I mean, I don't, I'm not sure the exact, but it does seem like you're saying like, hey, can we put this course in different groups and then we can we have it as a course you can just buy by itself as well? Yeah, so you can always have a course, uh, a course in multiple groups. That's not a problem. Um, let me just want to check on the new registration logic if it works, like I think before I say it. Let me just test something real quick. So I think what, if you want to sell it in each course, um, that is going to be a little bit different. So let's close that, update that. Let's just add all these courses. Yeah, I'm just testing this live now for you to make sure it works as we think it does. Okay. Because it's never fun otherwise, and you think, oh, it works one way, and then you find out it doesn't actually work that way. Uh, this is why I always have to test site open. <laughs> That's good to know. Um, so I do want to say that we probably will not be able to get to everyone's question today on this live. Um, and since I don't have your email address that comes in on YouTube, uh, if you can, please reach out to support for um, your questions. They're very helpful, ready to help you. And also for the people that did the question on the registration form, if we didn't get to your question, we are sending those questions over to our support team because we have your email address and support will reach out to you directly if you did have a question that we couldn't get to. So I just want to put that out there. Um, but we do plan to have these pretty regularly. So you will be able to come on a more regular basis and ask your questions. So. And back to this specific question, it does work as I expected. You can just, you know, have a course in a group as a sale price and then sell it individually as well, which is what I expected. Awesome. But so. I just wanted to verify because we did change the logic a little bit and I didn't think we broke it, but you never know. <laughs> so. We didn't break it. Great. <laughs> we didn't break it. It works. All right. So that's probably going to be the last question I'll be able to get to for this time period. So this one asks, we want to have more than one course creator. Is there a plugin to help um, when having more than one creator? I have more than one course creator. Uh, yeah, you can do that out the box in a sense. You can use a plugin like user role editor and just allow them the correct permissions to manage the courses. So they may have like a WordPress editor role and then just add a couple of uh, course specific permissions to them using the user role editor plugin. Then they can come in and build courses or edit existing courses, whatever permissions you assign them. So that can be done quite easily. Yeah, and that's funny because I actually, um, when I was doing more freelance work, I had a client that kind of had the same issue. They had people that were coming and making courses. And so one of the things that we did, we did, you know, do the different permissions. And then we also recorded a few Loom videos that kind of just showed them around. Uh, and I think we used another plugin to kind of like restrict. And also, depending on the role, it's not going to show everything on the WordPress admin. But we did remove a few things so they could only just click on a few things on that side mm -hmm. and create their own course with but you still probably just want to make a video or maybe even point to our documentation of like, you know, how you actually go in and put in the, um, the head library lesson and like the different uh, modules and different things like that. Those words aren't coming to me for whatever reason. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> uh, so that is it for today. Like I said, again, I apologize if we couldn't get to your question. Um, if you're on the uh, on this live and we didn't get to your question, please uh, send a message to our support team at support learn .com. That way, all your license and info, info comes through. Um, and it also, if you did a registration uh, question, then that question is going over support, and they will reach out to you directly. But I do want to thank you all for joining us, and we will see you again. And we'll also send out another email letting you know when um, another Q and A session will be available, so that way you can get your questions answered live. Um, Jack, you have anything else you want to add to this? 
Uh, the person who asked this question just asked what's the plugin, and it's user role editor. So I don't know if you want to chuck that in the comments for them. I can't use a role editor. All right, so that is in uh, it's in the chat now. So thank you all for attending, and we will see you all next time. Bye. Thanks. Bye.